So as we fret over North Korea, we miss a story way scarier. ISIS planned to bomb a jetliner in Australia in a fairly sophisticated plot. Terrorists got plastic explosives sent via airmail into luggage, they think, before the baggage was abandoned prior to airport security. Apparently, this was a sophisticated device shipped from Turkey through security, probably by air cargo. Authorities discovered the plot from a tip weeks later, after. To summarize in one word, yikes. This is the real battle. As we wipe out ISIS in terror hotbeds, they're now fanning out. All it takes is one free agent, a dirty bomb, and 9-11 will look like a bonfire. This latest plot shows that these fiends are indeed still plotting. So as ISIS handbooks teach this stuff to recruits, what's our move? The arrested plotters are siblings recruited by another brother in ISIS, meaning terrorism is an intimate bunch, and we should look at them all. It's life or death. Said it before, radical Islam marries terror to new, to new technology. They now have refined wares, and they learn fast. Even though they failed here, we don't know why, they will adjust and keep at it. We must do the same. We always knew plastic explosives were coming. We better make sure we can detect them, even in air cargo. So I'm thinking, on September 10, 2001, you could probably find a ton of stories on North Korea, but few on bin Laden. A lot's changed since then. 16 years ago, it was a jet and a box cutter. But now we got drones, biotech, plastics. So if you're sleepless tonight over North Korea, you're doing it wrong. This should keep you up instead. After all, we can find North Korea on a map. Dana, you're a political person in 2000. The election, how much was al-Qaeda mentioned? I always find this amazing. Um, in that entire campaign... Neither Al Gore or George Bush were ever asked a question about Al Qaeda. Interestingly, on September 10th, 2001, um, the White House communications team was there late at night till 10 p.m. And they had a like, big crisis. There's going to be a front page story in the yeah. New York Times the next day. They're really worried about it. And the topic was the Cheney Energy Task Force. Right. Right. Like something totally non consequential um, to the bigger picture. As ISIS loses territory, their online empire is growing. And so, also with plastics and 3D printing, uh, what I think we should do is I think President Trump should oversee an intel surge because we need a lot more people out there with eyes and ears and informing on people like the brothers. Yeah, this is uh, well, from the Wall Street Journal. A lot of this information came from Ahmed S. Yala, who's an adjunct professor at George Mason University, said the bomb materials uh, evaded all security measures via air cargo. Mo, this is kind of scary, right? <laughs> scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mo, this is scary. Uh, you only hear scary. that in the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, and the fact that the, the, the whole notion of nation states, yes. you know, has completely eroded. That's why I always right? think that North Korea is rational yeah. compared to this. And, and, and with the rapidly changing technology that all of us are struggling to keep up with, right? right. I mean, it, it, it all adds to the, to the what's scary. Um, I think there are a couple of things we ought to do, right? I agree with, with Dana, invest heavily in intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an economic component, both mm -hmm. putting pre economic pressure on uh, those countries that are giving safe haven, yeah. but also helping to change the economic dynamic that's helping to drive some people, right? That's creating some of the despair. Uh, third, I think there's uh, uh, obviously a military you know, mm -hmm. component to this that we need to pursue. And there's a diplomatic component. We need to engage the, the, the Islamic countries. Oh, yeah. Right? They have to play a I mean, role. The hijackers of 9-11, they weren't poor. Nope. No, there isn't. But a lot of the young people who are being drawn are people who do feel a tremendous amount of despair. And I'm not saying I that's the I think you're talking about thing. a moral poverty. Right. Okay. Moral and an economic yeah. poverty. I mean, yeah. absolutely. You can, right? you can have yeah, a great sure. job and still want to kill everybody to, to get 90, uh, 72 virgins. That's moral poverty, in my view, I guess. I, my point is, all of these things, these are all different pieces to a broader puzzle. There is no yeah. singular answer here. Right. What do you think, Kim? You know, I think that, um, you know, it's a multifaceted approach that's going to be successful against this, um, you know, unending uh, battle against terror and jihad. And you see that they are constantly trying to innovate and, like, you know, upgrade, upgrade new application available. That's what they're doing. And they want to outsmart us. And they're really tireless in terms of, you know, the efforts that they're making to be able to achieve success.
-hmm. It is the only thing occupying their thoughts and yep. their attention. So when you hear stories like this, you know, it makes sense. And they're trying to outthink. Like, they were amongst the first, you know, the jihadists and ISIS and with the caliphate, trying to use some of these encrypted messaging systems like Signal and WhatsApp and Telegraph to be able to avoid detection. And that's why our intelligence, as Dana points out, has to be even more um, strong and commendable and aggressive in terms of being able to get the information to anticipate and also to find out the, the connections, the relationships, and sort of the terror web. Yeah, Jesse, that's the, uh, that's the weird thing. It's like when, when uh, in the Wall Street Journal they were talking about how these were brothers recruited by another brother in ISIS. So that it's, it's, you get criticized if you talk about looking at family. Yeah. But it's family that's in this right. case. Yeah, these brothers are obviously evil men. ISIS is like a army of rats, and they're always trying to burrow into your home, you know, going into a different crevice or chewing through plaster. And then, you know, the civilized world is just trying to plug holes mm -hmm. and just trying to play defense around the perimeter. That can only work for a certain amount of time. So you have to think creatively. You have to anticipate what they're going to do next. President Trump did that with the travel ban. President Obama used certain tools like drones. He was focused more on rhetoric. President Trump, very creative. You know, you had black sites, you had Gitmo, you had course interrogation. So right now we still need to be thinking one step ahead because you're, you're right, you're not gonna win this just by putting bullets in heads. Although Trump is doing that pretty effectively in Syria right now. And that's why they're kind of dissipating and scrambling and coming up with these other crazy ideas. But you're going to have to, like the president said in Saudi Arabia, drive them out, not just physically, drive out the ideology. The ideology, radical Islam, is motivated by death. And when you take that motivation away, you can crush it. But until you enlist the rest of the Muslim society, mm -hmm. you're not going to win it. And keep them busy. Like you need keep, keep the pressure on. Exactly. Make yeah. them always like, be worried that they're about to get caught. Because it's, it's not if, it's when Absolutely. for the next one.